<laughs> okay, I'm Jake Bidell. This is Think Tech Aloha United. We stand here on Thursday at noon, 12 o'clock rock, every single Thursday. And Aloha United Way, which supports 242 some odd charities in the state of Hawaii, all doing good work, uh, all hand picked, hand selected, a uh, careful, you know, reflection of the needs of the community. Uh, they send down people like Community Clearinghouse, which is part of Helping Hands Hawaii. Okay, and today we have uh, to my left uh, Maria Vaughn. She's the Community Clearinghouse Warehouse Supervisor, and to her left, James Lee, Program Manager. Welcome to the show, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for having us. Well, how do you how did you get into uh, how did you get into community clearinghouse and uh, helping hands? I mean, did you take a course for it? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually have a pretty personal story with Helping Hands Hawaii. Um, I actually started off as a case manager quite some time ago, but when I started with the agency, after my contract ended, I loved the agency so much that uh, I came back wow. uh, when the position was um, open, while I was still volunteering, of course. But uh, yeah, so That's a great statement. Yeah. You're dedicated by definition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's a great agency to work for, and I, I mean, we're partners with Aloha United Way, so the agency itself does a lot of great work out in the community. Yeah. James, how about um, you? For me, my journey actually also began as a volunteer. So really? I started volunteering with the agency, uh, looking for a job, <laughs> and uh, eventually was hired on uh, as a temporary worker, um, but then slowly, you know, fell in love with the work, fell in love with the people. So okay. definitely, I think as a company, we share a passion in serving our community, of course, but also working with people. Okay, I'm really impressed. I really <laughs> am. You know, it's dedication. So you said <coughs> passion for serving community. How exactly do you serve the community? Well, as an agency, Helping Hands of IE, we serve the community in many different ways. Um, specifically in the community clearinghouse, we provide material goods. Uh, there are other programs that operate out of the clearinghouse, of course, that provides different aspects of assistance. Um, but I think the overall idea is to provide families and those who are struggling, whether they be individuals or elderly or family with children, uh, with resources so that they might um, continue on their path to achieve self-sufficiency and prosperity. So that says that they do not have self-sufficiency at the moment you first have contact with them. They are disadvantaged in some way. Sure. And you're going to provide them, quote, material goods, I want to explore that, mm -hmm. uh, to help them on their path to self-sufficiency. Yep. How do you do that? Well, um, through, as, as any nonprofit will tell you, community collaboration is a huge aspect of our work. So mm -hmm. we work with a network of providers that we regularly connect with that identifies these families that are already doing such good works in the community uh, in many different areas. And they identify these families and they provide us with a referral um, to come through the warehouse. Um, many of our different programs that provide different types of services uh, in the way of uh, housing and rental utility assistance, uh, in the way of providing uh, behavioral health services, are all interconnected within the agency so that we may um, identify these families and a system in a holistic manner. So you are uh, the manager, the program manager mm -hmm. of uh, community clearinghouse or helping hands. So tell me the hierarchy of it. So helping hands of IE is our agency. Community clearinghouse is one of our programs, okay. uh, specifically in the human services division. Okay. Um, under helping hands of IE, we also have a behavioral health division, uh, which we provide specialized services uh, in the way of mental health. Ah. Um, also, we have a bilingual access line, which provide language access and services. Oh, I'm interesting. So you control other programs aside from this one with with the, uh, the sure uh, community uh, clearinghouse. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's let's turn to you, Maria. Mar Maria, you're in, you're in the hard goods department. You're yes. a warehouse manager. I have this vision. <laughs> I have this vision of an Amazon warehouse, <laughs> and it goes on for miles. What is it like, the warehouse? Um, yeah, actually pretty close. If you walk into uh, our location on Nimitz there and you walk into the warehouse, it is literally high tin roofs, high ceiling. We've got roll-up doors. And you'll see the um, items donated to us by members of the community. So you'll see clothes, you'll see furniture, beds, dressers, chairs. Um, we also have a small food pantry. And on a day-to-day -day basis, you can see the hustle and bustle of the warehouse from donors dropping off um, donated items to clients coming in to checking in for their appointments um, as well. 
Wow, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So the warehouse is filled with donated items. That's what it amounts to. Yes. Uh, including some food. Yes, yeah. yes. And uh, the hustle and bustle is the people coming to deliver those items. Yes. But do you also deliver those items? You have a staff that delivers those items to the people who need them. Um, unfortunately, um, we have limited resources. So what we do provide, however, is a pickup service for our donors where we can go out and pick up donated items. In the case of delivery of goods, we actually recently um, partnered with Holly Maliola, who helps Housing First um, clients move into units. So in that capacity, we do offer the drop off of the donated items. Mm -hmm. um, we find that a lot of our clients, their struggle with coming into the warehouse for services is the delivery component. Yeah. Many of these families are low income, um, very limited, homeless, homeless um, and so therefore they don't have the means to transport a lot of these items. Many families who are able to bring in vehicles are families who have relatives or friends who perhaps have a truck them. who help them. But the majority of the time, the difficulty lies with the delivery of the goods. So how do you, I, well, two questions, by the way, I'm curious about Warehouse, because yeah. Warehouse says to me, <coughs> it says tech. <laughs> you, can't, you can't organize a warehouse without tech. What yes. kind of tech do you have to organize the warehouse? So currently right now, um, a lot of our technology that we hope to install are things such as uh, point of, like POS systems, point of sale systems to help us inventory, categorize. Um, you can tell better. me what's in the warehouse right now. Um, right now, can, we don't can, have that. Inventory kind of thing. I can give you general categories at the moment okay. um, in terms of the items that we receive. However, in terms of actual details, in terms of amounts, quality, things of that nature when it came in, I can't give you exact details of those quite yet. Um, Is that something you're looking to do? Yes. We definitely are looking to improve that system. Um, one of the possible ways to do that off the top of my head was a POS system, um, hoping to categorize those items better so that we have it appropriate information for a lot of our donors as well as clients. Um, you know, last Saturday uh, there was a kickoff on a program called HACC, mm -hmm. H-A-C-C, -C, and it's, a, it's organized by DBED, you know, Department of Business Education, okay. uh, Business Economic Development and Tourism in, in the government, mm -hmm. state government. And, and this is a month-long hackathon where uh, these com low, young um, uh, millennial type, computer programmer type people mm -hmm. Um, sit and make programs. Uh, many of them are making programs for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. um, many, and this, a month is enough time to really get some traction on building a program. I'm not, I'm not sure there's time for you to enter that, but it's something you ought to check up on because oh. they might give you a, 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 you know, a free, free services and create sure. a program that will help you in the warehouse. Yeah. Definitely, that sounds awesome. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Any yeah. help we can get? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay, and then, <clears throat> and then you have. Um, distribution systems, and so you, you probably have to identify who's at the door, who's coming around, mm -hmm. so they don't take advantage of you in any way. Yes. Because uh, they could take it, you know, come, come <coughs> Monday, get stuff, come Tuesday, get stuff, and be selling it around around the outside. <laughs> yes, you know. yes. We, we definitely do have things in place, um, policies, procedures in place, where um, we, in a sense, do a check. Make sure that people who are in need are receiving the services that um, we can provide, but at the same time to ensure that um, the services and the goodwill of our donors are not being taken advantage of no. at the same time. It's a matter of integrity for the program. Well, sure. To ensure that... You don't want to be involved in a program with a trap door. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. So goodwill, you use the word goodwill and it reminds me of Goodwill Industries. <laughs> goodwill yeah. Industries says, uh, you know, put your stuff on the street, we'll pick it up and uh, mm -hmm. take it down and give it to the right people. Yes. Um, so this is kind of like that, right? Similar. Um, very similar um, system except we don't sell our items. Our items go back to our clients entirely free of charge and we really depend on our partners to um, appropriately check their clients. Um, we do a verification process on our side to ensure that the clients do qualify according to the federal poverty guidelines and any other things that they have to abide by that um, before they come in to, for the actual appointment. Now if I wanted to, if I wanted <coughs> to uh, make a donation sure. to uh, this community clearinghouse division, so to speak, of mm -hmm. helping hands, um, how, would I, how would I do that? I would take my stuff that I don't need, where I think that might be useful for somebody else, and I would put it in my car, I guess, and I yes. would drive it down to your warehouse on Nimitz, yes. Nimitz on Sand Island Road, yeah? Yes. 
uh, and I would say, Maria, I'm here. <laughs> how, that, how would that work? Um, so yeah, so our uh, donation drop-offs were open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30. Donors can drop in any time. I do have a staff who sits in the front. Uh, sh her name is Pula. <laughs> She'll be able to help you and uh, check you in, um, give as much assistance as she can. And then if the donor yourself require a gift, uh, donation receipt, um, we do have that in the front for you mm. to fill out as well. Okay, okay, yeah. that's really valuable. Um, What's your website so people can look this up? Sure, um, www.helpinghandshawaii.org. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. And your phone, can I call too and check up? Sure, um, you can actually call anytime at 440 3800. Um, and actually, with that number, you can also call to arrange the donation pickup. So, if the donor has bulky items, furniture, yeah, yeah, beds, yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. we can try to accommodate by doing the pickup for the donor. This includes everything then furniture? Yeah. I mean, yeah. my goodness, it's anything in the world. I, I, do you ever say no? <laughs> do you ever say, well, you know, please not? Yes. Don't do that. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, there are certain items that we aren't um, able to take, whether um, mainly due to safety reasons, we aren't equipped with the staff to appropriately assess the condition of these items. S things such as car seats, medical equipment, um, things that potentially our demographic might not need, such as pianos. Um, most of our families it are doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> most of our families are moving into small units, mm -hmm. or they're they're needing very basic items. Um, for example, beds, the highest demand item that I get constantly is beds. are beds. Because they have no beds, money, yeah. they're moving in, there's no place to sleep, they don't have any furniture, a bed would really be helpful. Yes, yeah. the, the level of request for beds to the point where I'm constantly calling to see who out there has beds. Beds, beds, beds anyone beds. beds. <laughs> um, you know, the clients calling and saying, you know, my children are on the floor, I need to get in, can we get a bed? I can't keep the beds on the floor you know, quick stocked, you know, enough for the clients who come in on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Now, some of your clients come in, they don't know exactly what they need. They, mm -hmm. they can't match things up because mm -hmm. they, they don't know exactly what's in this warehouse and they don't even know what they actually need. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you talk to them? Do you say, um, you know, let's see your circumstances and see if we can match up what we think you might mm -hmm. need with what we have here as, as you go through that? Uh, definitely. So the first part of contact is with their own case manager so that the case manager can assess what it is that they need. When they come into us, um, I always tell them when we check them in, they have about a half an hour or so to shop. Uh, we leave them alone. So let, let them walk around. Yeah, let them walk around, see Your what's out cart? there. Shopping cart. And is that all. right? <laughs> yeah, give them, give them that, the dignity. Sound like Costco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the dignity to pretty much choose their own items and people don't question you. Um, it's what you like, go for it. You know, you've already done the proper process. It's, but it's at the checkout, so to speak. Yes. You know, I know it's not really a checkout. Sure. Do you ever say, uh, you know, do you really need that? Uh, are you over overstocking here? We over do, <laughs> we do. And as I mentioned earlier, we do have a policy in place and the staff is awesome about being... Um, mindful of what the clients take and making sure that it matches up to what is uh, it's reflective of what's on the application that's maria vaughn <laughs> she's with community uh, uh clearinghouse part of uh, helping hands and james lee is here with us he's, he's a program manager for that program we're going to take a short break we're going to come back we're going to talk to james about where this all fits you know in the landscape of right. nonprofits and charitable organizations in hawaii Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Hello, I'm Crystal from Quok Talk. I've got a new show here. You've got to tune in. Check out my topics on sensitive, provocative female issues. So Tuesday mornings, 10 o'clock. Don't miss it. It's going to be fun and dangerous. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state, as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Bingo, we're back. We're back with Maria Vaughn and James Lee of Community Clearing House, part of Helping Hands. So we, during the break, that's why we do these breaks, we, you know, regroup. 
we had a discussion about exactly where is the warehouse. It's like, it sounded like a game or something. Where is the warehouse? <laughs> so uh, maybe we didn't describe it accurately before. Where is the warehouse? Hey, get there. Oh, sure. Um, so we're located 2100 North Nimitz Highway. We're right at the intersection of Nimitz and Pu'uhale. So if you're familiar with that area, it's about a block over from Sand Island that we mentioned earlier. There's actually a two-story McDonald's there. So we're right across the street. I know that McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> That's the woman you take an inter island flight and you're hungry when you come back. <laughs> Immediately go to that McDonald's and you find out everybody in the place is doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're, we're right there, one of the four corners. Yeah. Um, we, our entrance, however, though, is a little bit on the back, so at the back side of the building. So you're going to have to turn on Pool Holly to get into our property. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, James, let's focus on you. Okay. Let's look at the larger picture. First, what kind of other uh, <coughs> programs do you operate uh, at Helping Hands? Myself, personally. Mm -hmm. um, so I am a program manager in the Human Services Division. Uh, so primarily, the Human Services decision, uh, the, the Division assists with basic needs, what we consider basic needs. So Community Clearinghouse, of course, provides material goods. Um, I also manage the SNAP Community Outreach Program, uh, which is an outreach program for public benefits specifically. That's the one SNAP. I had heard of. I think that's, yeah. that's very well known, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we do, you know, outreach work for people who are potentially eligible for SNAP, uh, people who may be facing access barriers for one reason or another, whether it's you know, the language barrier or uh, because you're disabled and you lack mobility, uh, you're unable to seek the benefit. Um, so we, you know, trying to bridge that gap uh, in providing that service so for people. You say snacks, that's a care snap. Oh, SNAP. Yeah, SNAP. What's a SNAP? SNAP, uh, S-N-A-P, is an acronym for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance okay. Program, uh, which is a newer that's term more, for That's snaps. more important than a snack. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can get snacks with SNAP. Okay. <laughs> now, what about the you know, comparison with Meals on Wheels? What's, what, is there still a Meals on Wheels? Or well, you? Meals on Wheels provides actual meals, uh, hot meals, that yeah. are delivered to the, yeah. um, to the families and individuals. Yeah. Um, SNAP is a benefit. It's a federal benefit. You know, it's an other word for food stamps. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's issue to the individual or family that they can, you know, go and do grocery shopping themselves. It's, mm -hmm. it's a fund that gets recharged every month uh, where you can utilize to buy groceries ah. and unprepared food. Okay, so you're not, you're not having inventory of food? No, uh, no. You, this, this is uh, at Safeway. Yeah. Right. So we are assisting with the acquisition and maintenance of the benefit. So um, many it's an administrative people, task. Right. Um, it, because we find that in doing outreach, a lot of the time uh, people are aware that the program exists and know that the resource is out there, um, but they either have difficulty accessing the resources or um, they're not able to stay on it for very long because of access barriers like mobility, not having a point of contact so for our transient phys population. Physically can't get down right. and use the, the food stamps. Exactly, and yeah. that's a real difficulty. Um, and you know, to you know, bigger issues of uh, being in areas where there there lack access points. You know, there's no places where you. So can how do you help? Um, we want to provide folks with the most updated information um, about who qualifies and who doesn't. Actually, assist in the application process in providing assistance and information about um, most recent changes about the program. Providing our transient population a consistent What's point of transient contact. Transient population is that homeless? Homeless population um, who don't have uh, typically a uh, consistent point of contact. You know, you may lose your phone today uh, and have a contact number the other day, mm -hmm. um, or don't have a regular place to receive mail. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to meet the community um, at their location, at their environment, you know, and this includes... You get out and go and talk to them. Exactly. And this includes forming community partnerships, uh, agencies that uh, operate drop-in center, food pantries, actually being at those locations and meeting the community. Yeah. Oh, that's very important. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, essentially, it's a federal program. You're administering a federal program, mm -hmm. um, and does the state get involved in this? Does the state support this program too? Right. So, to clarify, it SNAP is a federally funded benefit, but yeah. it's operated on the state level by the Department of Human Services. Okay. So, we are contracted from the Department of Human Services to conduct outreach activities. Okay. How important is that in in the larger picture of uh, Helping Hands? Uh, it sounds like it's a really important thing because it's where people eat. Yep. And eating, as I last understood it, eating was really important. <laughs> Absolutely. And it really is a piece of a bigger puzzle, right? So um, food resources, material goods, um, financial resources, 
all plays into the big picture of helping an individual and a family to achieve self-sufficiency. Yeah. Now, so, you're, you're, this is the implication you're, you're giving is that somebody down and out, somebody's homeless. I mean, maybe it's the same thing these days, mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to help them achieve self-sufficiency. So, and self-sufficiency, I take it, is to have a place, have a bed. Beds sure. are important too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you know, otherwise, get on get on your feet, become self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Maybe a job, two mm -hmm. jobs are good. Absolutely. Um, so you help in all of this continuum, all of these elements, to get them from the street, from being you know down and out, uh, to a, a, a more ordinary life. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, what other functions do you perform in this way? Well, really, as you said, Jay, is, is, is a part of a larger continuum. Um, and achieving self-sufficiency while that being the end goal, um, we may not necessarily see it a lot of the time in providing that services. And that really speaks to the importance, once again, to the community collaborations. Um, whatever we are not able to do, we make sure that we help individuals uh, be aware of and get to agencies that are able to provide that type of services. So you're going to so, refer them out? Absolutely. If, if you find they need something on this the road to uh, self-sufficiency uh, mm -hmm. um, that you don't have, then you're going to refer them to another agency. Absolutely. And that's the collaboration you're talking about. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of a blur, but every single week we talk to some of the charities who are associated in some way, some more than others, you know, with the Law United Way. And it's a blur because a lot of them are really dedicated to the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I'd like your thoughts about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it working efficiently? Is this the way the charitable community has to work, uh, where everybody sort of takes a whack at the same problem and they talk to each other and they see if they can coordinate? But you, in fact, you have agency, 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 agency dedicated to, you know, helping the same people um, in the same way, mm -hmm. but, but different somehow. How yeah. does that work? Well, I think it's definitely a work in progress, um, but it's definitely a place that we want to get to is when everybody can come together and work together as opposed to, you know, being territorial and, and That's being competitive. That's what we need to avoid, yeah. Right, right. And, but, you know, preserving the understanding that you are always going to have agencies that are specialized, you know, in the work that they do. And, and we want that. We want people to be good at what they do. Um, but at the same time, we need to recognize the importance of coming together and sharing resources, especially in the nonprofit industry where, you know, managing limited resources is it's kind of an ongoing and constant challenge. Yeah. So um, we want to get everybody into the mindset uh, of doing that. And I think, you know, over the years, um, we're not quite where we want to be, um, but we are in making... Terms what, in terms of what? In terms of getting everybody on the same page and, and you know, um, the whole collaborative mindset. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, I think, you know, indications is that we have made some great strides, yeah. uh, you know, with Aloha United Way bringing agencies together with, um, you know, uh, groups like Partners in Care um, that are bringing agencies together to work on issues of homelessness. Yeah. So uh, um, there are more and more, you know, community collaboratives and, and that are coming up. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy that you're sensitive to these issues. What, what, what do you do, James, if you find, for example, that another agency with which you know may or may not collaborate with is doing pretty much the same? Mm -hmm. um, is there an MO on how you deal with that? Do you call up and say, look, you're doing the same thing we're doing. Can't we collaborate and avoid duplication of effort? Does that happen? Absolutely. And, and that is inherent to our you know, procurement process, um, that, we're, that when we seek you know, projects or funds uh, to fill areas of need, that is obviously the first thing that we look at as an agency, is whether or not there is a need. Um, not whether or not there is a need in the community, but whether or not there is a need for us to be um, serving on this particular issue. So uh, that goes into part of the research about you know, who is already serving um, this type of uh, topics or areas in the community, and whether or not our uh, efforts will be of duplicative yeah. uh, in that sense. Yeah, I, you know, I, I've come to the conclusion over time um, that, um, that we don't want government. I mean, we, we want to minimize government's involvement on the front line. You know, we want Maria running that warehouse. <laughs> we do not want the government running that warehouse. It'll be, it'll be a lot better if Maria is running the warehouse than if government is running the warehouse. You know, <clears throat> it's just the, the operators, the ones at the front end, the ones that have the actual contact with the, with the benef beneficiaries of these organizations, they got to be nonprofits. They got to be dedicated by it like you yeah. are. Um, so that, you know, to me, that's just something I've learned, my, my own ethic on the matter. 
Um, but then it, within the nonprofit world, which is a hard world, as you mentioned, always looking for money, always trying to find volunteers, always trying to keep it going, you know, and for this visionary thing of trying to help people. This is not easy, and I commend you both on being involved in that industry. It's really important. It's important in Hawaii for sure. Um, but there's two. There's two. There's a breakdown of uh, two levels. One of the operators who run the warehouses and actually deal with people, and the other are the administrators who keep it all together, who do the collaboration, right? Who who create the priorities, who raise the money. <laughs> and it sounds like you're in that level of activity and there are many of many of you and I guess the question I put to you is who is leading that um, should we have government leading that nah <laughs> what do we do to keep everything coordinated mm, I think every party has to be involved definitely uh, from the community but definitely you know funders um, government entities as you uh, mentioned but I think what is more important is that there to be a feedback loop you know we are I believe more tuned with the population and the need of the community and it's important for us to have a, a venue to voice that feedback and get that information back to the funders and, and report you know our work and our finding accurately so that they can appropriate you know the resources hopefully um, back to us to to do the work so it once again, you know, um, is, is that collaborative effort, not just side to side, but top to bottom as well, yeah. um, to provide you that get leadership information. leadership where you find it, mm -hmm. yeah. So I know you guys come, you come with notes, you've been thinking about this, <laughs> you talk about it, you talk to your colleagues about it, you come down to Think Tech and you like to get a message out, okay? So I'm going to offer you this last part of the show here, <laughs> you know, a, a minute maybe, each of you, to get... You know, there must be something you wanted to talk about, Maria, but you <laughs> never had the chance. This is your big opportunity. Face that camera oh. and tell them what you wanted to oh. tell them. Okay, well, um, I really actually wanted to also discuss about our seasonal programs that we run out of the community clearinghouse. We just wrapped up our school supply program where we assisted, I believe, we made about 8,000 kits or so, 85 hundred kits for children of low-income families so that just wrapped up and we are actually gearing up for our Christmas holiday program adopt a family so um, be on the lookout for all communications in regard to that seasonal program thank you Maria Maria Vaughn okay James Lee what do you leave them with uh, well I think Maria pretty much did my part <laughs> about uh, promoting the uh, seasonal program that is coming up but uh, I just want to thank Think Tech for the opportunity for us to be here today. I want to thank Aloha United Way um, for providing support to agencies like ourselves. And thank you, everybody. Excellent. You guys are great. You're a great team. You're both elegant. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you very much, James, Maria. Appreciate thank you for having us. Aloha. You. <laughs>